On Christmas Eve, many days ago, Rocky lays quietly on his bed. He did not wrestle the sheets. He breathed slowly and silently. <laughs> okay, never mind on that. But he was listening for a sound. He was afraid he'd never hear. Ah! Oh my god! Oh, 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 sorry about that. I'm in a hurry to get these presents delivered. Thanks! That's gonna cost me a lot of money to get that roof fixed! Oh, hey, a present. It's December, and what better way to start with the month than play some Christmas games? So what are we going to be looking at today? The Polar Express. Based on the film with the same name, The Polar Express is an action-adventure Christmas game released in 2004 by Blue Tongue. They released it for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, Game Boy Advance, and Microsoft Windows. But according to Wikipedia, the game is also on PlayStation 4. Wow, really? PlayStation 4? Let's check it out. The game's not on PlayStation 4, only the movie is. Lying asshole. We're gonna be looking at the GameCube version, so let's give it a go. The game starts off in some little kid's bedroom on Christmas Eve. Here we meet our main character, a boy named... Uh... Anyway, the boy hears a train outside of his house and he decides to go check it out. Here he meets a conductor named... Anyway, he decides to hop on board to go see the North Pole. Along the way, he befriends a girl named... Jesus Christ, does anyone have names in this movie? To answer my own question, yes. The only people who seem to have names in this movie are Billy, Sarah, and Santa. That's it. Everyone else is nameless, so you pretty much have to make up names for them. Which I already did. Their names are Boy, Girl, Mom, Dad, Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, and Smartass. We cut to the inside of the train where we meet our main puppet villain, Ebenezer Scrooge. He's upset because the kids are more excited about seeing Santa Claus than they are playing with toys. Herpless Shimers, Herpless Shimers! <laughs> bah! I can't stand children! Heh, <laughs> neither can I. So he steals the tickets from the kids so that the conductor can throw them off the train. So basically it's up to you to find all the tickets and stop the evil puppet from ruining Christmas. The plot's weird, but it's harmless, I guess. The game looks beautiful and Christmassy as it should look. The controls are okay, but the jump button is a little delayed. You do get used to it after a while, so it's not that bad. Plus, it's not really a deal breaker or anything like that, it's just something that I thought I should mention anyway. I also love the music in this game. It makes me feel like I'm actually going on an adventure to the North Pole. Now, like I said before, you have to collect the tickets for the children. But why do you have to collect it, you might ask? Well, it's because the other kids are too scared or too stupid to do it themselves. Like take this level for example. You have to help this kid find his ticket in one of the jack-in-the-boxes. Now you think he would just, I don't know, get it himself? But no, this kid is afraid of jack-in-the-boxes. For God's sake, they're just toys, you little pussy. What's so threatening about a toy? After that, you have to throw balls at these puppets who kind of look like Pinocchio rejects. Then you gotta throw food at them in another room, which is pretty easy to do. What happened in here? Don't you know it's against railway regulations to throw objects inside the train cars? Well, last time I saved your ass from getting kicked off the train. Jackass. There's a part in the game where Billy's trying to get on the train, so we have to pull the emergency brake just like in the movie. But first we have to fight Ebenezer Scrooge. You're going to have to get past me if you want to pull this emergency brake. And I don't believe that you can do it! Oh yeah? Well feel the raft of my balls. Here! No! The heck was that? No! 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 Blah! So Billy finally gets on the train, but you still have to find the rest of the tickets. The next stage has you playing tennis with, um, Charlie in the box. 
And after that, you have to sneak past a cook to get to the other kid's ticket. The cook is very angry and won't let anyone in the kitchen. Why is the cook angry? Someone messed up all the food he made. Now he's got to make more. Wow, he must be pissed. Back to cooking. So much to do. What was that? <laughs> wow, that's got to be the most happiest, pissed off person I have ever seen in my entire life. I am very angry. You can tell by the sound of my voice. In fact, I am so angry that I am going to sing a song. What a wonderful day! What a wonderful day! By the way, have you noticed the animation on these kids when you give them their tickets? Oh, thank you! Thank you! Well, Mr. Racky, it appears that you've been working very hard at the company and I see no reason for you to not get your raise. Here you go. What was that? Uh... Nothing. I can't get past this train car. The door at the other end of the pantry is locked. Did you look for a key? I searched and I found it, but promise me you won't laugh. I won't laugh. Some horrible little mice ran off with it. I'm really scared of mice. <laughs> First of all, that's not funny. That's sad and pathetic. Second, that has got to be the most fake laugh I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Third, they are all toys. They are a child plaything. You are a sad, strange little man. Ah! You'll never believe it, but those mice were only wind-up toys. You shouldn't be scared of toys. Toys? Well, still. Wait a minute. Hold on. You thought that the toy mice, the, the ones with the little wind-up things on it, were real mice? Those mice were only wind-up toys. Toys? How do you mess that up? For the last part of this level, you have to help another lazy pansy fight off toys and retrieve his ticket. Honestly, there's really not much to say about this kid because he's exactly like everyone else. Scared and stupid. So everybody has their ticket back, but the evil puppet decides to steal the girl's ticket at the last minute. Let's see what happens to the girl when she realizes she's lost her ticket. Ah, they'll never find it here. Yes, they'll never find it in this poorly rendered air vent. So because she doesn't have her ticket, the conductor decides to take her to the front of the train by walking on top of the train. You know, this scene always confused me. Why couldn't they just walk through the train instead of on top of it? Wouldn't it be more safe? Luckily, the boy finds the ticket in the air vent and decides to chase after them. But first, a cringeworthy cutscene. I can do this. Just gotta be careful to make sure nothing knocks me off this train. That girl was depending on me. I'm not going to let her down. Yeah, I guess it's about time I talked about the main problem I have with the game, and that is the main character. He is beyond annoying. He keeps pointing out the freaking obvious, his dialogue is super cringeworthy, and on top of that, he just comes off as cocky. If you want to stop me, you better do it now. Let's get that key. Try to be brave. Now stay there. You! That was close. We found it together. Aha! Got you! You know what? Just for that, I'm going to end your life. And there is no God. How come this kid didn't explode into a million pieces? Well, anyway, after the end of the level, you come across Tom Hanks number two. I mean, the hobo. Hello? Is there someone there? What? someone there? He's right in front of you, you freaking idiot! By God, how stupid are you? So the boy talks to the hobo to figure out how they're gonna catch up to the front of the train. There's no way you're gonna make it if you stay on the roof. So it's hopeless then? There's one way to get that ticket back to the girl. Yes, there is a way to get to the front of the train, and that is to go through the train just like in the previous levels. 
We gotta jump off this here train and take a shortcut. Freaking idiot. So because logic doesn't exist in this world, we have to slide down the hills and catch up to the train. Although to be fair, this level is actually pretty fun. Okay, this is it. We're nearly there. When I say jump, you got to jump. Got it? Question. How is he supposed to jump when he's literally hanging on your back? Freaking idiot! So he gets on the train and finally meets up with the girl. What's happening? Shouldn't you do something? I am doing something. This is what they told me to do. Ah, yes, they're letting a 10-year-old girl operate a train. I'm sure that absolutely nothing will go wrong. What's that sound coming from the engine? It's... Get back! He's <laughs> Gonna melt. What? Something went wrong with the train? Oh no! So because the train isn't working too well, you have to help the two stooges catch train pieces that are being shot out of the fireplace. I don't know why they were in there in the first place, but whatever. So they get all the pieces back, but the boy is worried about what the conductor would say when he finds out that he stopped the train again. You didn't stop the train, idiot! The dumb blunt broke it somehow! But how are we gonna fix the train? By dancing! Yeah, dancing. Because that'll fix the train, right? Well, by that logic, I could just fix the broken lamp over there just by dancing. So yeah, you have to play a rhythm game to fix the train. You use the D-pad to move in the direction they want you to go, along with the A and B button. After that, the train is fixed and the girl finally gets her ticket back. So you have to go through the train to fight Ebenezer Scrooge one last time. But first we have to deal with this crap again. A mouse! I saw a mouse! I already made fun of the others for being stupid, so I'll just let this one go. Now that we killed all the evil toys, it's time to destroy the Ebenezer Scrooge puppet once and for all. You're just a bitter old toy. Christmas isn't about toys. It's about giving and sharing. Oh, shut up. Anyway, to defeat the giant puppet, you have to throw snowballs at his face and then at his golden heart. And so the day is saved and Christmas isn't ruined. Uh-oh, we're in trouble, aren't we? Would you children care to join us in the dining car? It's time we had some refreshments. Um, you are aware that your train car has been destroyed, right? I guess not. So everyone gets to sit down, relax, and drink some hot chocolate. Except for you. You have to help the waiter with refreshments. And what did you know it? It's another rhythm game. Up, down, left, spin, up, down. Skip it. Finally, it's about time we made it to the North Pole. So if you've seen the movie, you know that the boy and the girl go back inside the train to invite Billy to come along with them. But unfortunately, the train cart gets loose and starts rolling down the hill. In this level, you have to tilt the train cart left and right to avoid hazards and take different paths. There's two questions I have with this level, though. One, why are there so many gaps under the train tracks? You'd think the elves would make their transportation more safe, but I guess not. Second, why are there train carts sitting out in the middle of nowhere? I mean, good lord, how lazy are these elves? The next level has you running this tubey thing which takes you to the gift wrapping department. To get there, you have to hit the colors that show on the little mini screen. What is this game for kindergartners? There's only one problem with this game though. The girl keeps telling you what color to hit, as if I can't see it right in front of my face. Lady, shut up! So now you're in the factory and you have to find your way into the big sack of presents. How the heck did Billy get up that- never mind. To get there, you have to pull the levers that are scattered across the factory and you have to make your way to the next room. Do this three times and you move on to the next level. Now you're inside a giant sack of presents and you have to get out by climbing all the way to the top of the pile. You know, I hate to question the game's logic for the four millionth time. But why are the presents bouncing? Are there 
basketballs in them or perhaps a bunch of rabbits. Oh, and some of the presents can float now. Yeah, uh, I don't know why or how. They could just fly all of a sudden. I don't know. All right, we finally made it to the last level. So what are we going to do this time? It's great to have you on board. We have a slight problem, though. And I wonder if you would be kind enough to help. Now, is one of you good with handling vehicles? I need you to control the movement of the Zeppelin. Do you think you can do it? Try to keep the Zeppelin from crashing into things. You're going to let a 10-year-old boy operate a flying vehicle that contains all the presents in the world? Yeah, why not? I'm sure nothing will go wrong at all. It's not like he's gonna accidentally crash into something. Christmas is ruined. Ricky, quick, something terrible just happened. Turn on the news. It's a sad Christmas day all over the world. A tragic accident has happened in the North Pole. Santa Claus's giant blimp of presents has crashed into the city of elves and all the presents have been destroyed. Because of this, all the kids in the world won't be able to have a happy Christmas. So yeah, your goal is to fly to the center of the North Pole so that Santa Claus can deliver the presents to all the kids in the world. This is the hardest level in the entire game, but that's not saying much. You have to dodge things like trains, bridges, hot air balloons, and... Jesus Christ, kid! You need more altitude! Yeah, no kidding. Could you have made the ride any more bumpy? I agree with you, smartass. So after going through all of that, the kids make it back to the group, Santa Claus flies his sleigh full of broken presents, he sprays pixie dust or something, and the game finally ends. And that was the Polar Express video game. Is it a bad game? Not really. Despite the fact that it makes no logical sense, it's really easy to beat, and the characters are really stupid and annoying, it's a pretty okay game. It's one of those games that I personally play once every Christmas. Does it have problems? Yes. But if you're willing to look past them, I think you'll find some enjoyment out of this game. If you're a fan of the movie and you're looking for a Christmas game to play, then I think it's definitely worth a rent. Thanks for watching everybody, and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. <laughs>